Hello, I'm going to talk to you about the five essentials of fly casting. Um, I'm going to do this from an instructor's point of view. Personally, I don't teach these to beginners. I know some bit, some people who do. Um, I do teach them to intermediates. In particular, um, one of the, one of the essentials is a variable casting arc, which can be a light bulb moment, or it used to be a light bulb moment um, for quite a few people. So the five essentials. These, these were created by a good, very good friend of mine, Bill Gamble, and his, his late father, Jay. And they were created in the 90s, and when they came about, they really solved a lot of problems within the what was then the FFF, because um, it kind of got through different, it kind of got through the idea of there being different styles. For example, somebody would go to Lefty Cray, and they would learn to do one one technique and then the same person would go to Joan Wolf and be taught something else. So it kind of got through, cut through all of that. And I, what I want to talk to you about is my interpretation of them. And I know Bill kind of agrees with this too. And I also want to show you a way that I think can be, make them even more useful. And I'll do that at the end. Um, the first thing to understand about them is this is not four or five things that will make you a better caster. These are five things that actually work together, function together. It's a little bit like Meccano. I always say it's like Meccano. He's got these five things that come together and creates a fly casting model. And But with the way I look upon it, it's like a filter that you apply between yourself and the cast that you're seeing. Um, some, some instructors seem to interpret them too literally and they run into all sorts of problems, okay? So it, it's like a filter and it's like a matchstick man. I, if, you, if you're a kid and you watched Open University on BBC Two, if you're old enough to do that, you remember you had all these guys in white coats and, uh, and, and with matchstick man drawings and this is kind of how I see the five essentials. I kind of see Bill wearing a white coat and holding a test tube beaker in one hand. Um, so, so it's a model. So the first essential, and it doesn't really have to be a, 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 an order for this because they are, they are all put together, but the first and overriding essential is the straight line path of the rod tip. So we know that the, the line follows the path of the rod tip and the straighter the tip path, the tighter the loop, the narrower the loop. So let's imagine our, our rod tip follows this straight line path. The line is going to follow this. And the theory is this is going to give us a tight loop. The reality is that the closer we get to the straight line path, the more likely this line that's following it is actually going to run into the rod tip. Um, so this is why it's, I say this is a filter. It's not to be taken too literally. But the truth is, the closer that we get to this, this straight line path, the narrower the loop, the tighter the loop. And that's affecting, the, the rod tip path affects the fly leg of the loop. It doesn't affect, the, it does affect the rod, the, the, it does affect the, uh, the, the rod leg of the loop, but that's after the loop has formed. So the five essentials are really, what we're describing is during the casting stroke, from rod straight position zero to rod straight position one, as the rod tip, as the rod is unloading, we have this bent rod, it unloads, it passes rod straight position. That's when the rod tip speed is moving at its maximum. And then it goes round into counter flex and comes back up. So the five essentials apply from RSP here, when we start the casting stroke and finish rod bends and, and finish as that rod is passing this straight position, okay? That's the casting stroke. So number one is this SLP, this straight line path for the rod tip, which is an action in itself. It's tracking, you know, it's the bird eye, bird's eye view of this rod tip. It's looking down on the, on the, on the casting plane. And this, if this it's, it's partly something we do in itself. It's an action in itself, straight line path, and it's a result of the other four coming together. So we have a few drills. I always include, if I talk to this, if I do this with instructors, I include drills. You know, for tracking, there is obviously a drill there where uh, probably a good one is to imagine you're casting along the side of a wall, maybe even get a football field where you've got a line here, make a few casts and then just drop your back cast and see where it is, okay? And if it's straight along the line, that's good. 
Um, I always teach that there's two targets. You've got your target in front and you've got your target above you. And it's a bell. It's an imaginary bell that you've got to hit with a fly. And these always align. So the closer the, closer the front target, the higher the back target. It's like airplane wings, right? On a real, on a long distance cast, we actually have two targets and we look at them. So we pick our target before we make our casting stroke. Bang! We then pick our target in front before we make our casting stroke. And you can always tell a trained distance caster because his head turns first and then he goes through with the cast and then his head turns again. He doesn't watch the loop fully unroll because if you watch the loop unroll, you can't pick your targets, right? Pick your target, bang, look at your target, bang. Okay, so this is, this is the action. This is the straight line path action, which is tracking. But it's also, you've also, so you've got this straight line path in this direction, but we want to have this straight line path in this horizontal plane. And this is, this is a result of the other four essentials coming together. And they can be in any particular order. And they're pretty open-ended too. So one is proper application of force. And that means, that can mean anything really, doesn't it? It can proper application of force. But basically it means we're going to accelerate usually to a crisp stop. And this acceleration, some people talk about constant acceleration. I don't believe that. I think it's continual acceleration. So we must accelerate and then we stop the rod arm bends and, and, um, and the loop forms. Okay. And there's a really good drill for this one. Um, but let me, let me include that drill with the next one, okay? So, this, the, that, so this, the second section essential is proper application of force. The third essential in, in our order here is proper size casting arc. Now I think this is the most important one for intermediate students to learn. And casting arc is our angle change from RSP zero, rod straight position zero to RSP one. So here, this is a narrow casting arc. And this is a wide casting arc, it's this angle change. And when we cast, this rod bends. And the more line that we have, we have outside the rod tip and the more force, or and or the more force that we apply, the more this rod will bend. And so the more bend in this rod we have, the wider this casting arc must be in order that this rod tip travels in this straight line path or approximation of a straight line path that we don't really want to have right so let's get this rod back together here now we have a casting drill okay and this is a really good exercise this is actually one of bill's exercises he calls it one foot at a time okay so we're going to start off with a short length of line I will start off with a short length of line here. I will start off with about 12 feet of fly line outside the rod tip, okay? And I'm going to start very slowly. And as I'm starting very slow, you can see my arc is pretty narrow. Now, because I'm going to increase the speed gradually, as I increase the speed, my arc must get wider. And the reason it must get wider is because I've got more bend in the rod. I'm putting more force in until we get more and then we're still getting a tight loop and then we can slow it down and as we slow it down we narrow the casting up such a good drill this put the line down and then bill will add one foot of line but that takes a very long time so i use one meter of line and now because we've picked up a little bit more line our casting mark must uh, must be a little bit wider to accommodate that increase of weight, right? It's only a little bit, but we can talk about it because it's there. So we get a little bit wider and we do repeat the same drill here. We can start slowly and then we can gradually increase the speed. And as we increase the speed, we must make these angle changes, blah, blah, blah. We can go faster, we increase the arc, and then we can slow the arc and then we can put it down. And you can repeat that to your heart's content or at least until you can't pick up any more line. So it's, a good, it's actually a very good one for working on technique, okay? So let's go back to these five essentials, right? So we have first is a straight line path of the rod tip, which is an action in itself, tracking, and a result of the other four coming together. One being proper application of force, um, which is usually, um, you know, an, an acceleration to a crisp stop. Um, there's a lot more we can talk about that, but we'll just keep it there. Secondly, we've got proper size casting arcs. We must adjust our casting arc according to the amount of force we've got in, 
according to the amount of line we've got out, both of which will determine how much the rod bends. So the more the rod bends, the wider our casting arc must be. Number four is proper timing. In other words, this, whoops, this line must have unrolled before we go forward. If it doesn't, it's going to have a knock-on effect in everything else we do. If the line's still going back and we go forward, we've actually, we've actually reduced our effect of casting up because we've, we've got rid of some of it because the line was still unrolling and there's, there's, we're not applying force to the line that's going the other way, right? So proper, size, proper timing, must let the loop straighten on behind you before you go forward and vice versa, okay? And the fifth uh, essential is the elimination of slack line. If you've got slack line here and you make your casting stroke, it's not pulling the line, the slack line is going up, up through the rod. And so once again, it's actually affecting your, your effective casting arc as you like, because you're not actually pulling the line during that phase. Okay, so that's the basics of it, okay? Straight line path for the rod tip, action in itself, tracking, and a result of the other four, proper size casting arc, proper application of force, elimination of slack line, and proper timing, okay? It's like the kind of all these bits come together. Filter that we apply between us and the cast. Um, so two things I would add to this, okay? So the first thing is, as an instructor, I would then use uh, another friend of ours, the guy who used to design these lines. This is an SA line, Bruce Richards. He's since retired now, but a really super guy. And he's, he was also very influential in the IFF, without the FFI. And he has his six steps. And using these six steps, we can actually use these five essentials to dissect and fix a cast, okay? So, for his six steps start with what does the loop do? Okay, so we're going to start off with a loop. In this particular case, let's have a really big fat loop. Okay, we've got these big loops here. So step number two is, what is the rod tip doing to create this big open loop? And that's going in this big doming shape. Okay, so then step number three is, why is that happening? What is a hand body? What is a hand slash body doing? Well, in this particular case, I'm just using a big wide arc with the hand, a big floppy wrist, okay? So then we say, well, let's fix that. Let's move the wrist through less through through uh, less of a less, less movement. Let's restrict that arc. Okay, so there's less movement, and and then the, what does that do? Well, it straightens the rod tip path, and of course that's number five. And then number six is the result of the straight line path is a tighter loop. And if only fly casting instruction was easy as that, we'd be out of a job, right? But that is basically the the, the steps that we go through. Now there's one last thing I would like to do to this because it's, it, this, is, this is a bit that's actually come from me, okay? So I looked at these, we've been using these for, well, I've been using them for about 20, 20 odd years, 25 years. And, um, and the problem with it is it's all, it's all reliant upon this idea of this straight line path, which is, is a, it's, it's true, but it's also a little bit of myth. It's not quite what we want. And it only applies to a straight line cast. So I've said, well, what about instead of straight line path, we have intended tip path. You know, we have proper application of force, we have proper size casting art, they're all pretty open-ended. Well, let's just make the tip path open-ended. Let's just have the tip path. Maybe you don't, maybe you don't even want to have intended. We can just say the tip path is a result of these five essentials, which is tracking, application of force, um, Casting arc, um, uh, uh, elimination of slack line, and proper timing, right? So that we could just say the tip path is a result of these things. We can get rid of this idea of this straight line path, and then it's something we can apply. So there are times when we actually want to affect the tip path during our casting stroke. Um, for example, you know, we we might intentionally want to throw tails. Fuck it, okay? So. There's a, there's a mangrove cast where we throw tailing loops and the fly comes under and skips under. So there you go, there's one, there's one use of doing it. But there's plenty of times you might want to throw an open loop, you might not want to throw a collapse cast. You know, a very useful stream cast, we dome the power application and the leader doesn't fully straighten and the fly lands at the end of, at the, end of the line. Nim sinks, we catch our big fish. Okay, so yeah, there you go. So my perspective of it is, I, I teach instructors to do it because it's all over, particularly it's all over the FFF test, any or the FFI test now. 
you can answer pretty much any question using this structure. Um, I don't apply them literally. You know, we have guys that will try to tell you the casting stroke is where, only when the rod tip travels in a straight line. And then they'll tell you stuff like to throw an open loop, you must throw a straight line path and then turn it down. When in fact, you can actually just dome it and it will still work. Um, so so, so it, you end up in some kind of strange situations when you try to apply it too literally. So I put it in between, okay? I, I make it a filter and then you can, you can then adjust it. Um, you can then say, instead of straight line path, you can just call it tip path or your intended tip path. So I hope that's uh, hope that's useful. Cheers, mate.